Excellent! Hey everyone, and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. It is Computex season, which means there's lots of product launches coming out. And uh, whether you're talking your, your Haswells, your Shields, your GTX 700 series, there's been a lot of buzz going on. But uh, what you might not have heard too much about is Team Red, or I guess that's what we call AMD these days. Uh, but what I actually have is what AMD has been working on and what they're releasing, well, right about now, or at least whenever this video is going to come out. That is their new Richland series of APUs. So this is going to be my first ever APU unboxing, and I have the flagship of the line. This is the AMD A10 6800K. So here we go with the APU unboxing. Uh, again, the A10 6800K. I'm going to be sort of rambling off some details about this product as I turn the box over in my hands and I'm sure eventually I'll, I'll actually take it out of the box as well. Uh, but essentially what you have here from AMD is a quad core $150 MSE, MSRP part and uh, that gives you both the CPU and the GPU on the same little processor and uh, you can put together a very nice little system with this. I've seen quite a few implementations whether you're talking about an HTPC We'll be talking about a gaming system because this can actually handle uh, games at decently uh, high graphics levels, especially if you're going to be playing at 1080p or below. And uh, the code name for this is Richland, of course, as you might notice in the title. You also might notice it says 680k on the top of the box. I'm, I'm not really sure why. Everyone tells me it's 6800k, but for some reason the box is 680k, and I don't really have an explanation for that. Uh, but anyway, it's quad core part, code name's Richland. Um, this is a refined version of the CPU architecture that they used in Trinity, and uh, that architecture more specifically was second generation Bulldozer, which is also known as Piledriver. And I know AMD parts tend to have a lot of different code names, so uh, to confuse you a bit more, the iGPU that's in here is based on the Cayman GPU arch architecture, which uh, I believe originally came out in 2010. Um, now, apart from that, uh, Richland's refinements, if you're talking about the, uh, the changeover from Trinity to Richland, is going to provide uh, uh, some higher clock speeds, and it's also going to provide um, some lower power consumption. You also notice you have dual graphics support down there at the bottom. You can pair this up with an AMD Radeon HD 6000 series graphics card, which I don't really see being done too often, so I don't know. It's it's it's. I feel like your, your better bet is going to be to buy a newer graphics card, a 7000 series or maybe an 8000 series once those are fully available, and that's probably a better solution for you. Uh, anyway, here's your certificate of authenticity that you get in the box along with the processor. Um, I actually, I never really look at these when I get them out of the box. Uh, let's uh, take a look inside and see. Wow, okay, this is going back a long ways, all the way back to socket 754, socket 940. Just uh, giving you an example of the pin layouts of those, which is, is kind of interesting. This is, of course, uh, socket FM2, um, which is not backwards compatible with FM1, just to throw that out there. Uh, also included in the box, you do get a heatsink fan. This is a really basic one. Uh, it's just an aluminum heatsink. Uh, you do get uh, the clips on the side. AMD has maintained the same CPU mounting solution for a really long time, which is nice because it's very universal. Uh, you also get some thermal paste pre-applied there at the bottom. Aluminum fins, a uh, fairly small fan it looks. I think that's like maybe a 92 millimeter fan. And then you also get uh, a, a very brightly colored cable. And it's a four pin connector, so you do have a PWM, which is gonna help the, the fan to always spin up and to maintain reasonable speeds in relation to the APU's actual temperature. Uh, but back to talking a little bit more about Richland. Comparing the 6800K Richland with the 5800K uh, Trinity, uh, the Richland 6800K is going to have a 4.1 gigahertz base CPU clock, 4.4 gigahertz max turbo CPU clock. Also, you get a sticker right there. I should, I should point that out. Sticker, case badge. Put it on your on your case. I know I'm distract being distracted again here, but uh, <laughs> you, you might also notice uh, the, the the plastic thing that the CPU is in. Those are actually really really sturdy. They designed them very carefully so that I. I feel like somebody told me at one point that you could run these over with like a car and, and the CPU would be okay. I don't re recommend trying that, but it is there. Uh, anyway, back to the clock speeds. Base clock of 4.1 gigahertz, turbo clock 4.4, uh, GPU clock is 844 megahertz, and uh, compared to the 5800K, that gives you a 3.8 gigahertz base CPU clock, 4.2 gigahertz turbo clock, and 800 megahertz GPU. So um, you can see they've given you about a 6 to 8% clock in increase. Also one of the nice things 
is they've given you official DDR3 2133 support. And actually pairing up uh, an APU with some really fast memory is a great way to go. So uh, check out uh, higher speed memory. Also 100 watt TDP and uh, the K means it's a black edition so it's unlocked for overclocking. Uh, performance wise this is going to be compared probably to mostly to lower end i3 and i5 Ivy Bridge and Haswell CPUs and um, just based on a few benchmarks I've seen already essentially if you're looking at a serial benchmark or a more more CPU intensive benchmark Intel is, is going to win when you're putting the CPUs head to head in the same price category. If you're looking at parallel or GPU intensive benchmarks, uh, Richland is going to win just about every time because it does have a much stronger iGPU. And Intel for some reason chose not to include its Intel Iris GT3 iGPU uh, in most of their Haswell desktop parts, um, unless that part has an R on the end. So that just basically means that AMD is going to retain the lead uh, when you're comparing comparable uh, APUs to Intel's uh, CPUs um, when it comes to the iGPU. But that's going to wrap it up for this quick unboxing video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the AMD A10 6800K from their new Richland series of APUs for the FM2 socket. I'm definitely looking forward to when we actually return from Computex. I'll be actually be able to uh, have some time to play around with this particular uh, APU, I almost call it a CPU, and see what the performance is like. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll probably be covering it on Newegg TV, possibly here as well. I'm really not sure what's going to go on. All I can see right now is Computex. If you'd like to see more videos though, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like the video and we'll see you all next time.